Welcome back to Blackthorn Prod, I'm Noah. Now, a few weeks ago, I made a tutorial on ways you can go about making a melee combat system with Unity and C Sharp, and so I thought it only normal to follow up with a ranged combat video. By the end of this tutorial, you'll have a character capable of handling a ranged weapon that rotates to face the mouse cursor and then shoots cool looking arrows that kill enemies. Of course, you'll be able to apply what you learn during this video to make all kinds of ranged shooting systems, from huge powerful bullets and rockets to delicate little arrows. Now, everything taught here can be applied to any game in need for a shooting system, be that a top-down shooter or a side-scrolling platformer. So, as you can see, I've set up this little scene with an archer-like character who carries a simple ranged weapon and that can move left and right. I've also got an enemy character I'll use as target. First of all, I want to get this weapon rotating so it faces the mouse cursor. So I'll create a new c -sharp script called weapon, drag and drop it onto the weapon and open it up. Now notice that the small chunk of code we're about to write to get the weapon rotating looks a little alien and it's not necessarily very easy to understand. But don't worry, once it's done, the rest will be a lot easier. So we basically need to calculate the angle we need to rotate around so that our weapon points towards the mouse cursor. We do so by first calculating the direction between the weapon and the mouse cursor. Remember that to get direction, all you need to do is subtract the destination position to the cursor with the origin, which is the weapon position. Now here comes the tricky line of code in which we will calculate the amount of degrees our weapon must rotate to face the cursor using that direction vector. Because now we know in which direction the weapon should be facing, so we'll set how many degrees it must rotate around to reach that direction. And lastly, we can set the weapon rotation with 0 in the X and Y, and for the Z axis, which is the axis we want our weapon to rotate along, I'll type rot Z, which is the amount of degrees we established here, plus offset which is a public flow variable I'll create right here. This is just in case the weapon graphic doesn't seem to be facing the mouse cursor, and so we can tweak its rotation with offset so that it does. So back inside of Unity, I'll type minus 90 for offset, which is a value that works really great for me, and you'll see that indeed my ranged weapon faces the mouse cursor. Great. So as you saw, that was a little tricky. The rest will be a lot easier, I can assure you. It's now time to give this weapon the power to shoot projectiles. So I'll create a public a game object variable called projectile and whenever the player hits the left mouse button I'll spawn a projectile. I'll spawn it at the tip of my weapon so I'll make a public transform variable called shot pose and use that for my projectile starting position. As for rotation I'll spawn the projectile with the same rotation as the weapon. Back inside of Unity I'll turn this simple arrow sprite into a prefab and then drag and drop that newly made prefab inside of this projectile slot in the inspector. I'll also make an empty game object called shot pose, appearance it to the weapon so that it moves and rotates with it, and then drag and drop it inside of that empty shot pose slot. And you'll see that when I click the left mouse button, projectiles will indeed spawn with the correct position and rotation. If your rotation does look, however, a little bit off, make sure that your projectile's default rotation in your sprite sheet is facing straight upwards. Okay, let's now make a simple timer system to control how fast the player can shoot projectiles. To do so, make a private float variable called time between shots and a public float variable called start time between shots. Before allowing the player to shoot a projectile, check whether time between shot is less or equal to zero. If so, he can shoot a projectile and then I'll reset time between shots equal to start time between shots, which is a value we will set in the inspector. If not, slowly decrease that value using minus equals time dot delta time. Back in Unity, I'll allow the player to shoot a projectile every 0.25 seconds. Excellent, it's now time to get these projectiles blasting forward. I'll create a new c -sharp script called projectile, place that on my projectile prefab and open it up. I'll begin by creating a public float variable called speed, which will dictate how fast the projectile will move forward. And then in my update function, I'll get the projectile shooting forward using the transform.translate function. The direction being transform.up multiplied with speed multiplied by time.delta time. If you want to give your projectile 
compile a limited lifetime, you can also easily do so. Just make a public float variable called lifetime and then invoke a function called destroy productile after lifetime amount of seconds. In this destroy productile function, I'll instantiate a little particle effect to make the projectile destruction look cool and then of course I'll destroy my projectile. Back in the Unity editor, I'll give my projectile a speed of 10 for example, a lifetime of 1.5, then I'll drag and drop my effect in this empty slot. And hitting play, you'll see that indeed my projectile shoots forward and will destroy itself after 1.5 seconds. Awesome. Now, if you're making a fast-paced action game, I recommend you make your bullet, fireball, or arrow big and powerful looking. Also make it fast, so it doesn't appear floaty and weak. Some people will probably roll their eyes and shake their heads now, but you can also add some screen shake whenever you shoot a projectile to make the attack feel more impactful. Of course, spawning a little particle effect near the tip of the weapon whenever you shoot will also make things feel that much more cool and satisfying. With that said, let's get the projectile actually hurting enemies. There are many ways you can go about doing this. In this tutorial, I'll be using rays, which are basically invisible lines that can detect colliders. To create a ray, I'll type in my update function raycast hit 2 d and I'll call my ray hit info, and then set that equal to physics2d.raycast. And in the parentheses, I'll state a start position for my ray. I'll just make that my projectile's current position. And then I'll type out in which direction I want my ray shooting out from. It'll be transformed up, so that the ray blasts in front of the arrow. I can also set a distance for my ray. It's best to make a public float distance variable that I'll set in the inspector for that. Lastly, you can use a layer mask to get your ray ignoring certain colliders, which is very useful. So I'll make a public layer mask variable up here called what is solid and plug that in right there. Now I can check whether or not my ray collides with anything. If so, I'll also check whether what the ray has collided with has the enemy tag. If it does, then I obviously want to deal that enemy some damage. For now, I'll just debug.log that fact. Once the ray has collided with something, whether it's an enemy or not, I'll make sure to call the destroy projectile function so that it indeed destroys itself. Awesome. And I'll head back into Unity and type 0.5 for distance in the inspector. No need for anything bigger. We just want the projectile detecting nearby colliders. And I'll make two new layers, one called enemy, the other environment, and give my enemy the enemy layer, my various environment pieces the environment layer. I can now state that what is solid is anything with the enemy or environment layers. Also make sure to create an enemy tag and add that to the enemy character so that my projectile will know it's hit an enemy and deal it some damage. Before hitting play to test things out, I'll make sure to add a 2D collider to my enemy character as well as my environment. And now I'll hit play and you'll see that when my projectile hits the enemy, or a part of the world, it will destroy itself and instantiate a cool destructible particle effect. Let's now deal this enemy some damage. I'll create a new c -sharp script called enemy, drag and drop that onto the enemy character and open it up in Visual Studio. I'll give this enemy a public int variable called health, then I'll make a public function called take damage that takes in an int damage parameter and I'll subtract health with that damage value. And now I can go back to my projectile script, create an int variable called damage and if it collides with an enemy then I can call the take damage function and pass in the amount of damage I wish to deal. And there we go! I can now make an if statement inside of the enemy's update function, checking whether health is less or equal to zero. And if so, I'll instantiate an enemy death particle effect to make things look cool and destroy the enemy. And I'll head back into Unity, give my enemy three health, for example, as well as drag and drop his death effect in this empty slot. And then I'll select my projectile prefab and set damage equal to one. And you'll see that after three shots aimed at the enemy character, it will die in a shower of particles. And that will mark the end of this ranged combat tutorial. Now, as you can see, you can make a dozen unique weapons with this simple system. You can make weapons that take a lot of time to shoot. When they do, they release mega powerful fireballs. You can also create weapons that shoot very fast, but cast tiny little projectiles that deal hardly any damage. 
Just really play around with the start time between shots, projectile speed, lifetime, and damage values, and you can come up with all kinds of unique and fun weapons. Heck, you can even take this a step further and give some special projectiles, once destroyed, an explosion effect, whereby all enemies found in a certain radius from the destroyed projectile take a certain amount of damage. You can also play around with physics and make cool floating arrows, and or have fun adding recoil to your shooting player character. With that said, if you feel like a ranged combat system part 2 where I can show you how to do all these things, definitely let me know in the comment section down below. Okay, thanks so much for watching. If you liked my content, then consider supporting me and my channel by hitting the like and subscribe buttons. You can also support me financially via Patreon, like these top supporters. Alright, have a great weekend. For those taking part in the Ludam Dari Game Jam, best of luck and have fun. I'll see you sometime soon next week for a Ludam Dari behind the scenes video in which I'll share with you all my game and my game jam experience. Okay, cheers! <laughs>